Did you hit? I hit it and it didn't do it. Do you got to come help me? Uh, the cursor. I did and I've got in live video. That's uh, because you're on. We're on? Okay. <laughs> so here we are. We're getting our technology straight and welcome. <laughs> welcome. Welcome to our exploration of forgiveness. And it's a good thing I'm in recovery from being perfectionist because now you can forgive yourself. I can forgive myself but I because can't forgive I'm you. imperfect. I don't you forgive always you. always forgive me. I'm, no. I'm forgiven before I even do no. anything to cause harm. <laughs> so I am happy to be here with you to discuss this topic because as we've said in previous Facebook presentations that we have the chance well, it didn't say three, two, one either, like it usually does. So we have a chance to do repair. And repair is so essential since we're such mixed bags and we can't always be perfect. We can't always, as much as we try, as much as we're well, committed. Some of us can, but <laughs> some of us can. Yeah, that we are still going to make mistakes. Not everybody is... Uh, the level of excellence where they don't make mistakes and, and since, i have compassion for those people who aren't at my level but um yeah <laughs> and so we need to find out how we can be excellent at repair how can we be champions of repair and one of the most important things that i can tell you about repairing is both the apology when we harm, harm somebody and about forgiveness when we've been harmed by somebody. And it may be just small things, it may be just neglect, it may be misunderstandings, but sometimes there's some big ones. Sometimes we have, you know, really things that have been very damaging and very hurtful to us. So the topic is called forgiveness is giving up hope of a better past. And so past is gone. Those moments are behind us. We can't go back and fix the past, but how we relate to our past, particularly if people have hurt us in our past, can make all the difference because there's only a certain amount of energy that we have available. If we're stuck in something from last year or five years or 10 years ago or 30 years ago, it's draining energy from us. So I, um, I want to emphasize that, that there are a lot of people who are pretty mixed up about forgiveness and they don't realize that there's a big difference between forgiving somebody and excusing them from their bad behavior. Somehow they're afraid that they're forgive that maybe it makes it okay. It's not okay. If a person hurts us, it's really not okay. And so there's a big difference. And if we can make that uh, distinction, that can help us to commit ourselves to the process of laying down the conditions that would give rise to a healing for us, not for them. Do you know, they may never know whether we're carrying the grudge towards them or whether we've forgiven them, but we know, and that makes all the difference that we're not carrying that heaviness, that we're not carrying that closed heart grudge, that we're really there, fully present with ourselves. And it's a whole process that we go through and you can't rush it, but it is important to realize that we've got a choice. Do you know, sometimes people think they're stuck, that they hurt me, I'm never gonna get over this, and we're not stuck, we do have a choice. And if people are flip with you and they say, oh, just get over it, just forgive, just let go, you have a choice to not do it too. You do it when you're good and ready, if and when you're ready, and you do it for yourself, not to be some kind of holy, moral, moralistic person, but because it's the practical thing to do and to not carry that heaviness. We didn't see the three, two, one, so I didn't know if we were on. Maybe we weren't watching. Mm, I saw. I was looking. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, you're still here, aren't you? Okay. Well, um, to all of you viewers out there, uh, welcome from me. Uh, and uh, I like this topic because mm -hmm. it is so crucial to our lives and our relationships. And for most of us, our work, the work that we really need to do to become more whole, more complete ourselves. 
Um, so I want to say a little bit about the word. Um, and uh, speaking of words, Linda used the P word uh, two or three times when she was talking. And of course, the P word is process. Mm -hmm. And that's what forgiveness is. It's process. And that's an important thing to keep in mind because a process involves, uh, it occurs over time and it has certain stages to it. And it is not a singular event that happens at one discrete moment in time. Um, there can be an awakening, an awareness, a letting go that happens in the moment. But um, in almost all cases, when that occurs, um, there's been preliminary work that's been done prior to that happening. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it's important not to hold the expectation that you or your partner or somebody will just um, go from zero to 60 in a second. You know, if you starting zero, meaning um, I'm really upset, hurt, angry, triggered here, um, and I'm just feeling that. I'm just becoming aware of it. And then 60 would be, and now I'm completely at peace with myself, and I have no strong feelings and no resentment, and um, I love you, and uh, there's nothing negative going on between us. Um, you can go from zero to 60, but it probably will take you more than 8.2 seconds. It, it might take you uh, 8.2 weeks or months um, or days. It's a process. And we want to talk a little bit today about what that process entails, what it involves, what the stages of the process are. <clears throat> so one part of the process, and this is a really important part, is not to rush it to choose to commit yourself to it, but it can't be hurried. Sometimes people, they want to rush to forgiveness before they give themselves a chance to really feel how hurt they are, how sad they are, how angry, enraged they are. And so you may need to journal. You may need to tell your story about the way in which you were betrayed or violated or exploited or whatever form the harm came and you may need to tell it a lot of times to a lot of people your friends could know your confidants could know you may need a professional person who can hold this with you so that you can go through the full range of feelings not to jump over it to try to go to forgiveness too fast and this is an essential part of making the descent in some of the dark yucky, mucky, you know, unpleasant, painful things to feel before we can hit off the bottom, press off the bottom to be able to come up out of the muck. Mm -hmm. So let's just look at what forgiveness actually means. Because for a lot of people, there's a misunderstanding of the term. They think that it has something to do with um, uh, validating or sanctioning the, the legitimacy and the correctness of what a person might have done. It means excusing behavior that may to them feel to be unjust or unfair or wrong. So forgiveness is not about, um, about the other person's behavior. In fact, it's really not about the other person at all. It's about, it is about a letting go. Mm -hmm. um, but the letting go really has more to do with what I'm attached to and holding on to in terms of uh, my blaming or wanting revenge or feeling resentful or uh, wanting to inflict some kind of punitive judgment um, on the other person. It's really got to do with my relationship with my feelings that are keeping me possessed by or stuck in these negative feelings of, uh, you know, betrayal, being a victim, 
wanting to hurt the other person, all these, all these things that are uh, possessing me. It's about liberating myself from the tyranny of my own mind and acknowledging my feelings towards the other person about what's, what he or she has done or said, uh, acknowledging the pain uh, or the whatever has been activated in me, mm -hmm. acknowledging that, accepting that, and disengaging from the negative fantasies of punishment and revenge and um, uh, resentment that, that can so easily accompany those feelings. The, the, word, the word forgive um, has its roots in, well, the root of the word is give, obviously. And um, it has its roots in the Latin perdonere, which is, means to pardon. Mm -hmm. and, and to pardon means to release from punishment or guilt. And that's really what we're doing, but it's not just the other person. It's releasing ourselves from the possession of these feelings that close us down and that inhibit our ability to be open-hearted mm -hmm. in our lives. So what Charlie um, is saying is related to how much of the process of forgiveness is an inside job. Do you know, sometimes people feel stuck with all these hard feelings because maybe the person died. Do you know, maybe you don't know where they are anymore. Maybe they're an unsafe person and you don't want to be in their presence. And they think they're stuck with all these feelings because they can't confront them and tell them how they feel. And, you know, they didn't do it at the time. And now they know that what was done to them was really wrong. And you don't necessarily have to confront the perpetrator that harmed you to get complete because it's an inside job and it's not for them anyway. If they don't know that you're doing this, do you know, it doesn't matter because it's for you. It's for you not to have to carry it. So to be able to be with those intense feelings and to find some compassionate understanding for why the person could have done what they did. It's very likely that they're not at a very high level of consciousness or not at a very high level of emotional intelligence. And maybe they were abused themselves and they just were ignorant, don't know better, self-indulgent, drunk at the time. Who knows why? But there were some reasons why they behaved so badly. And to have some compassion for why they could have done what they did may soften your heart a little bit so that you could move towards forgiving them, which is different from excusing them. And you still might not want to have that person in your life, even if they're a member of your own family. You may still want to keep your distance. You may not want to see them. That might be putting yourself in harm's way. Maybe send them a Christmas card. Maybe send them a birthday card. Maybe if they're in your family, you keep a connection, but a lightweight one. But you don't necessarily have to confront them, and you don't necessarily have to be with them, but for yourself you may choose to commit yourself to the process of forgiveness over time, whatever it takes, as long as it takes. And that's all done internally. So I would say that the two most important words that Linda spoke. Uh, Only two. The, the two most important <laughs> words. The most important. Yeah. Two, two of the most important words are uh, over time. Yeah. And that's related to the P word. So, you know, just to keep in mind that, you know, this is a process and what she's talking about is certainly a commendable place to get to. But um, don't kid yourself into thinking that, well, I, I can go from zero to 60 in 10 seconds, you know, and just go from, you know, wanting to rip their eyes out to, you know, feeling like um, I love them with all my heart. There are likely to be a number of different steps and stages in the process. So he, here are some of the things that you can expect to feel between the time that you become aware of the, the uh, pain or the anger that's there in the moment of uh, reactivity 
and the ultimate letting go that forgiveness can be. Um, and by the way, sometimes there is no ultimate. There's a letting go, and then we find out in the coming days or weeks or whatever that, oh, there's more, or oh, it's back again. Another layer. So we revisit it, and we may have to revisit it a number of times. Mm -hmm. And uh, so as I said, here are some of the things that you can expect to feel between now and then. Um, and um, one of them is um, anger, of course, and that is um, anger at the person uh, who we feel betrayed by, if it is a feeling of betrayal. Or, uh, and often the need for forgiveness does often come from a feeling of betrayal, which basically is the experience of s someone breaking or violating a, a covert or um, implicit agreement that we have. You know, so we have an understanding or an agreement um, that we're going to be nice to each other. Um, and then one of us is not nice. We have an agreement that um, we're going to uh, each take equal responsibility for issues that come up. And then one of us starts blaming the other person and denies any responsibility. So a betrayal is a, is a broken promise is when our word is in some way violated. Uh, by our behavior. Um, now that feeling of um, anger can also come towards ourselves when we feel like um, we're blaming ourselves for allowing this to happen, mm -hmm. or for being naive, or for in some way contributing to it. And we can get angry at ourselves, and then you know it's it is still a matter of forgiveness, but it's more about self-forgiveness. Um, another thing that is likely to occur, and Linda also made reference to this, is the need for repetition. It's not enough um, most of the time to simply express or deal with this anger or disappointment with another person um, and uh, have that be enough for us to, to forgive them. We... Um, uh, in our in our second book, The Secrets of Great Marriages, uh, there's a story in there about a couple in which um, he had an affair and um, uh, they had only been married for a couple of years and uh, she was devastated. I mean, to the point where she literally wanted to kill him. And uh, she locked herself in the bathroom because she didn't trust herself not to do something that she'd be sorry for. Um, and um, he, he did come to the point soon thereafter where he was really ready to, to make a solid commitment, keep it for the rest of their marriage um, to be faithful to her and ask for her forgiveness, which she wasn't about to give him because she had not moved through that stage of anger and resentment and pain. I mean, some things take longer than others. For some, some people take longer than others to, to release those feelings. And um, over the next few months, she would, it would take very little for her to get activated and reminded of what he did. And whenever she did, he she would uh, she she would blast him with all those feelings again. How could you have you know one of those conversations that start with how could you have? Um, and uh, and then basically, I mean, he had pretty much memorized the script, and it was the same message over and over again. And um, his challenge was to be able to receive the intensity of her feelings without telling her to get over it, mm -hmm. without trying to, without judging her as uh, indulging in this. Uh, and one of the things that, that often we do when we want somebody to forgive us um, is, is that we, we put subtle or implicit or uh, explicit pressure on them to, quote, get over it. Um, those are probably three of the worst words in the English 
language when used together. Mm -hmm. So sometimes Charlie says, expecting to forgive once and for all is like expecting to eat once and for all. It's a, a, a false expectation. So if it's taking you a while, even once you commit to wanting to forgive that person that harmed you, or maybe it's self-forgiveness that you're striving towards, and it's an arduous process for you. Patient and persistent with the process because it takes a while. Yeah, and I want to tell you one of the big benefits from doing this forgiveness work. We stop seeing ourselves as damaged goods. We stop seeing ourselves as weak. We stop seeing ourselves as a helpless victim. We stop seeing ourselves as I've got to isolate myself or I've got to cut myself off. I've got to protect myself because people are dangerous and, you know, they, they cause harm. We grow in our own self-trust. We grow in our own feeling of efficacy, personal power. We grow in our feeling of strength and courage. So there's a lot to be said not just for not carrying this heavy weight of the grudges that may keep our heart closed, but there's a lot to be said for the growth that comes as an individual to know I can recover from breakdowns. I can recover from people who slight me or harm me. I'm resilient. I'm strong enough to take it and look at how I've recovered from mm. this. And if it was a big betrayal, you get a big bonanza of benefits out of it if you work it, but even the small and the medium sized ones, they tend to offer a lot of growth experience. If we take it on and we really investigate all the moving parts that will add up to that breakdown being a breakthrough eventually. So um, a, a phrase, a short phrase that could characterize um, basically the essence of what Linda um, just said is that uh, it's a process for us of getting stronger at the broken places. Yeah. There's a breakdown and when there is it, although at the time it rarely sees, seems this way, but there is an opportunity for us to build resilience and strength within ourselves, depending upon how we choose to respond to this breakdown that we can become stronger at the places that are broken from the breakdown. And it's really um, a matter of how we, how we choose to, to respond to it. Um, and, and just to complete that vignette that I was describing, one of the things that, um, that uh, Barry, his name is Barry and he's, um, we use his name in the book too, um, but one of the things that he was able to do in his r relationship whenever he would get this blast, and it felt like a blast from, from his partner, of, uh, of anger mm -hmm. uh, because she needed to um, repeat this process a number of times until she could really diffuse the intensity of the anger. And sometimes people have to do that. And rather than getting defensive or trying to get her to get over it, as many of us make the mistake of doing, um, what he said to her um, in various ways at various times was, I know that you don't believe me when I tell you I'm really committed and, and I'm not going to repeat that behavior. And uh, I know that you don't trust that it's really going to happen. Um, but I appreciate you hanging in here with me mm -hmm. and giving me a chance to demonstrate to you that I really am trustworthy. And although I know that you don't trust me now, I do trust myself to, to honor my word. And I really am uh, looking forward to the time when you will trust me as much as I trust me. I would like to give uh, a simple but very powerful process to you that was given to me by Stephen Levine 
and his wife Andrea and they call it forgiveness meditation and it's sitting quietly where we won't be interrupted or distracted and bringing to mind the person that's caused us harm and we hold them in our heart you may be visual and you can actually see their face in your mind's eye some of us are not so visual and we just sense their presence we invite them to come close and we hold them we hold them with some uh, respect and that I am intending to forgive you it's hard for me to do this perhaps but I want to and you list the grievances of the way in which you were harmed and you say the words and for some of us and particularly in the beginning of the process it might be a reach to even say the words it may feel fake it may feel inauthentic but you know it's okay if we fake it till we make it and my meditation teacher Jack Cornfield says it's okay to act enlightened until we get enlightened and so to be willing to be that big person even if it's a little bit of a stretch or a lot of a stretch because we'll do it several times and it may feel more real as time goes on so we always would do that in class in, in Stephen's class and he would offer it to us to use it at home and believe me I had cause to use it a lot because I had a lot of people I was carrying grudges for but he always reminded us that the hardest person to forgive is ourselves that we have such extraordinary expectations of ourselves that we be so perfect and excellent at this and that and we have a lot of negative self-talk about the way we haven't lived up to those inner expectations and to hold ourselves in our heart and he would say as our own only child and that image would give us a little tenderness do you know that image of ourselves as a child and to call yourself by your own name and say Linda I forgive you for being impatient with the kids Linda I forgive you for not being as competent as you want to be in this that or the other domain and sometimes it was a real reach to find that sweet tender compassionate forgiving place particularly for myself or other people you know in my family or people that I felt had let me down in my friendship network but I can testify that it has been transformative and of all the things I know to do repair when there's been a rift in a relationship even if it's been a long-standing rift maybe you haven't spoken to a brother or sister or aunt or uncle or cousin or you know maybe even a parent because the rift was so deep for so long that this could be the repair that could uh, bring even a little bit of a rapport back in the way you think about them and perhaps even be able to be with them with a little bit of warmth so I offer it to you and please don't take my word for it you try it and look to your own experience and see what you find but you can take my word for it <laughs> <laughs> and that is the last word for today uh -huh. um, next week's topic is these words will take you a long way and uh, we're not going to tell you what those words are until next week. So but they're if you powerful. Hear what they are. You know how to find us. All right. Until then. And if you have a friend that you know that is suffering with carrying a grudge towards somebody, tell them to take a look at this Facebook live. They're all there archived because you probably have somebody in your life. Maybe it's not you, but somebody that you care about who could really benefit from this. So spread the word. Mm -hmm. See you next week. <laughs>